Hello guys, welcome back. Now in this session, we are going to understand the SPFX web part solution structure. So let's start our discussion. So guys, in our earlier session, I have showed you these steps to generate the SPFX solution. So for this session also, I am going to repeat this process so that you will remember all the steps for generating the SPFX boilerplate code. So in this aspect, I am going to perform task number one, where I will create a folder, task number two, where I am going to copy the dev container template and the task number 3 I will generate the SPFX boilerplate code once boilerplate code gets generated we will discuss about the structures then I will perform the task number 4 that is the gulp build but prior to that I will show that what actually it do whenever we run the gulp build and finally we will perform the task number 5 where we will run the gulp so to test our SPFX solution. So guys, as I already mentioned earlier, we have to repeat all these five tasks in each of the exercises as it is a prerequisite to start any of the new development in SPFX. Now let's start performing these tasks. So guys, I am into folder runtime 1.14 and over here, I will create a folder called lab 0 to understand SPFX solution structure. Now I will go inside that. I will copy this template and over here I will come back and paste it over here. We have completed our two tasks. Now the third task is to generate the boilerplate code. So to do that I am going to open the Visual Studio code. I will click over here show more option open with code. Now I will click on reopen in container. So it is starting dev container. So it has started the dev container and over here I will click on this plus icon and just ignore this error and now I will run the yeoman generator code that will generate the boilerplate code for this project so let's do it you at Microsoft slash SharePoint so all these steps we have already performed earlier I wanted to repeat it because so that you will remember all these steps because it is going to be repeated in each of the exercises whenever we start new development in SPFX so enter yes now it is asking for some of the configuration questions so we must have to specify the value for this so first it is asking what is your solution name it is the same one we are going to generate web part here i will specify lab 0 to understand web part structure enter i will use no framework so now it has started generating the boilerplate code so guys i am pausing it over here once it is gets generated then we will discuss about all these folders as well as all the files which is sitting inside these folders so guys now human utility has generated the code let's start our discussion the first folder you already knows about it what is the significance of dev container as i have repeated multiple times in our earlier session so this is the folder which holds the configuration about the docker container which will give us the runtime now the second one is related to the vs code it is not important the most important one is the config folder so config folder contains config.json file so guys this config.json file holds the information about the solution of this particular web part like you will see it over here there is a something called bundles it holds the name of the solution and what are the components it has the entry point for this particular web part solution is this one lab 02 uwps web part dot js and it is coming from the lib folder but if you will notice over here there is no lib folder now that will be generated once we run the gulp build command time being you have to understand that the config.json file holds the information about the solution what are the components it has for a time being we are having only one web part if you are having multiple web part then we can have multiple entry over here and within this component array you are finding the entry of that particular web part which we are creating while doing the development so here you must be asking that we are writing the code inside the type script but we are getting over here the js file that is because this is being generated after compiling our code with the help of gulp build command and at the end of the day these js file exist within the spfx package that is spp package another question you are asking that there is no lib folder but still it is referencing that so that lib folder get generated when we run the gulp build command this is what i already mentioned now let's proceed for the now over here you are getting the manifest file manifest e holds over here it holds the metadata information about the web part so if you want to look into this you need to go inside the source folder then there is a web part 
and then there is this json file so this is what it is referring over here so you will see it over here it is referring this manifest.json file now let's go back on fact.json now next we have the external section so basically this section being used whenever we will work with any third party library like jquery or any other third party library so external keys holds the information about the third party library which is being used within the project in the upcoming session i will show you how to use this particular configuration next we are having a configuration called localized resources so this is basically related with the language related settings so suppose if you want to build a multi-language supported web part then you will use this configuration so again over here it is referencing the lib web parts lab 02 wps loc Local.js. This lib folder is not being generated yet. As I already mentioned, when we run the gulp build command, then it will generate the lib folder. Now let's proceed further. The another important configuration file we are having is the deploy azure storage.json. This holds the information about the deployment. If we are going to use the Azure storage in our web part project, then we must have to specify the details about those storage information which we are keeping inside the Azure. So this is what it contains the reference or say details about the Azure storage where you can specify the account which storage account you are having what is the name of it the container the name of the container over here and the access key to access that particular storage so basically it is related with the deployment configuration now let's proceed further next we are having package hyphen solution dot json so this file is very important when we do the development so what does it contains it contains the name of the solution the id of the solution what version so whenever we do the iterative development we need to update these versions next we are having the include client side asset and we have a skip feature deployment so what does it do it will install your app once it is being available once you deploy your spp package at app catalog then it could be available to all of the site collection so if you are making it true that means it is automatically gets added to all of the site collection next we are having is domain isolated so basically it is related with the security aspect of the web part when you mark it true then it will run into the iframe context not inside the page context so that i will discuss in detail for a time being you just understand that each domain isolated is related with the security aspect of the configuration the next configuration we are having which is related with the developer configuration where you can specify the name if you are having any website url if you have any privacy url terms of use of url that you can define over here you can specify mpn id next we are having metadata which holds the information about what actually this particular project is you can specify short description long description and if you want to specify any of the screenshot you can specify the path of that screenshot in this particular array if you have any video url you can specify over here what categories it belongs to you need to specify the categories over here next we are having the features this will hold the information about the features configuration where you can find that the name of the feature title description the guid that is guid and the versions the next configuration we are having for solution packages over here you can specify the name whatever the name which you want to keep for this particular spp package and you will also specify that when you run the command where the solution gets generated so over here it is showing that it is going to be generated into the solution folder and this is what it is referring over here now let's proceed further the next configuration we are having is the serve.json so whenever we wanted to test our application we need to specify which site collection it need to be tested this i already mentioned that in our earlier session i have mentioned the site collection name which we have created earlier over here and when we run the gulp so it was opening that particular site collection by appending this particular underscore layouts workbench.aspx so this is the reference of the hosted workbench and that is what it is referring over here another configuration we are having over here is the port number 
which holds the port details where this particular solution gets executed when we are testing it it is also mentioning over here that https true so that means this particular application supports the https protocol and this initial page i already mentioned this is the reference of the site collection where we want to test our web part now let's proceed further next we are having write manifest.json so this will holds the information about the cdn path so this is being used whenever we host our web part in the office cdn then we can specify over here the path of your office 365 cdn so this is basically related with the deployment aspect of the web part so now we understand the significance of the files which is existing within this config folder so now let's proceed further then we are having the node module so node module folder holds all the npm packages which is required within this project so it holds the information about those packages now you must be asking that from where does it gets the reference to install these packages so it will get the information from these packages from the package.json file that we will discuss in detail so for a time being you should understand that so whenever any of the node module contains any of the packages over here the reference for this particular package will come from the package.json file if we specify over here if we want to install any of the packages then it must be going to sit inside the package.json file then when we run the npm install command what will happen that it will get the reference of that particular package and it will install over here inside the node module and that is being referenced within the solution 